All right, so today the plan is to convert what is a uh, Faber Bridge and studs and a uh, Tone Pros uh, locking tailpiece to a you know, quasi relict, naturally relict Bigsby. And then I've got some of the Callaham uh, parts here versus, in this case, the original, which I tried to machine down uh, myself using Dremels and files and whatnot. And it actually came out fairly good, not exactly pretty. But as you can see, versus the stuff that they provide, a lot better. So uh, also on top of that, it should be known that I dog-boned the... Vibramate uh, yeah, mounting system. So essentially what you do is you cut off the middle bar that would normally be here and then you you know polish it down as best as possible. Um, it does reduce some of the rigidity you'd have with having that cross member there. So um, what I have done or what came to me is since typically these things are screwed into the bolts, but they're just really resting on pads. I went ahead and bought a Faber tone lock kit with the tailpiece studs, which should I decide not to Bigsby it anymore, we'll use those. But more importantly you get these washers, which you can actually buy separately, but the additional cost, I felt good to have some studs around. Um, and now that will provide a absolutely locked in stable platform for these guys to mount upon, which should hold the Bigsby even more steady. So let's get to it. Before going further, I figured I'd show a comparison of some of these Callahan parts. So here is the original, the Bigsby that comes with it. And let's see. And it's tough to hold the camera, but I don't know if you can hear that. This is a bit heavier, but when I spin it, one, you can't hear it as much, and it's rubbing against my hand, but um, you can tell just from the way it's machined. And this is post-cleaning it, uh, that it's just a lot smoother. I also noticed that um, the strings have a tendency to move around, um, both in the back, which that's why I got one of these. This is the actual through bar, the, the rear bar on the Bigsby. Uh, I attempted to modify mine, drill holes like you can find on YouTube and uh, one of my drill bits broke inside and welded to it. So bought one of these. Uh, so this will keep the strings coming at the same angle and keep them steady. And then this obviously you know, similar size, uh, but has the the grooves to keep the strings in the same place. So, um, not that the other one is bad. You know, obviously people have been doing just fine, but you know, uh, sort of a step up in materials um, to make it function better. So, we shall see. Okay, another quick comparison. So, this is the. Tone Pros, or what's in here right now, is the Tone Pros uh, locking stud, and it's a good stud. They all have a little bit of slack, you know, it's a screw. Uh, but the way that it locks your bridge down, or your tailpiece down, is this. Um, so, works great. You know, if you had different variety of thicknesses, um, it does the trick. Faber's answer to that is, well, instead of having 
a screw inside of a screw, use a solid, um, solid bolt, solid screw, and then just have a washer to meet whatever size requirement you might have. So if you need something bigger, sorry, it's a lot of focus. You know, it comes with a variety of choices here. So as you can see, I've got a clear spot. Looks like there's a little dent, because again, one thing about the Tone Pros, it's not round, and they leave that that way, and you get little wrenches to tighten it down. But, you know, Gibson isn't making that whole think about Tone Pros, so got a little bit of a finish ding right there. And I, obviously there used to be a bunch of finish in there. So, anywho, uh, thought process being, when it comes to Bigsby, now I can put that in there, and that should keep it level, or absolutely as low as possible, but without the chance of it harming the finish and we're just resting on these, uh, you know, whoop, whoop, stupid little pads. So we shall see. Okay, while I'm in here, what I did was this is the old post. The new post is super uh, tight tolerances. The old post is less, so it slides in and out really easy. But I noticed the the, the roller wouldn't uh, go smoothly or freely, and it does now. Uh, and what I did to fix that, let me just see, pop this out for a second. One-handed, try not to drop everything. Okay. The area on the inside of these things is A, rough, and B, not exactly flat. So I took a Dremel with a little bit of sanding and took a tiny bit of material off to try to flatten it out because it's, I forget if it's sand cast or whatever. So it's, you know, it's not perfect. So I'm now going to polish it up so that it's um, super smooth, but now it should uh, roll freely without going too wide where it's going to move back and forth. All right. So just a little tip if you've got, and obviously you could do this with sandpaper too, and just go down to a very fine grit, but basically level it out. You can tell by using the post, if the thing will spin smoothly, great. If it catches, uh, then you might have some blockage. Okay. I got the new shaft in, which really is a tight fit. And I got uh, the sides polished up. I don't know if you can... I'm probably not going to be able to see. Anyway, I took like the polishing tool and smoothed it out. And now... Boom. You know, that's about as good as it's going to get. Don't think we're going to need that much motion for a big speed, but uh, definitely nice, nice and smooth. So, hope that's helpful. And let's get on with the install. Okay, so it looks like things are going to work out. Uh, I have the dog bone pieces in. This one's already on pretty good. And as you can see under there, I have the Faber pieces. How I can tell it's working is when I push down, I can feel and even see that it's floating. Let's see if we can get under here ever so slightly. Well, that it's resting on the metal. So as opposed to it possibly resting on the top and putting some dings in. Uh, it's giving it a more comfortable uh, place to rest. So I might go up one size. We'll give it a test fit and then go from there. The next size is, you know, a bit more noticeably bigger. So that could cause angle mounting issues. So we'll see what happens. All right, well, she is installed. Uh, by the way, I use locks, and it works better without the extender plate that comes with the Vibramat system. But anyway, everything's hooked up. We got the uh, Callaham arm, the back, 
the roller. And under here, let's see. It's tough to see, but it is in there. That's the Faber uh, little spacer in there. So it's really, you know, it's, it's, it's rock, rock solid. I mean, absolutely going nowhere. And since this is locked in place, and I like to use double wheels, a la Bonamassa style. Um, yeah, this really shouldn't go anywhere. So little nut sauce. And uh, we should be good to go. Let's string her up and see if she works. And is able to hold tuning. As you can hear, this thing is perfectly smooth. And you can tighten it up so that it stays wherever it go or wherever you want to. So there you go. And that's the difference between the dog boning. Dog boning. Um, yeah. So there we go. Not too shabby. Okay. We've got all the Callahan parts in and the Bigsby set up. Uh, the guitar obviously has fresh strings, so it's not always perfectly coming back. Um, but we should be good to go. Uh, tone hasn't really been affected. So, um, nothing major. The guitar was fine to begin with, and obviously, I don't think you get a big speed to fix problems. So, um, but yeah, so let's see how she sounds. of the the time uh, or on to the mark uh, it really depends you know where uh, you sort of end the wobble if you dive bomb and leave it it's probably gonna be flat if you're pulling it back hard and, and you just let it and you let it go it's going to not come back to a perfect, perfect tune so um, you know I think part of it is just Realizing the limitations uh, of what it's supposed to do. It's supposed to be, you know, a little tremble, tremble, um, tremble, whatever, uh, as opposed to, again, uh, dive bombing with it. But I like it. it. You know, looks cool, fun little thing to experiment with. And, uh, yeah, if it's not really negatively affecting the guitar. <laughs> and everything uh, I'm gonna get it perfect but the Callaham stuff definitely helps considerably even for the brief period of time 
that I had it all stock. Um, in my opinion, this roller and these strings not shifting around uh, helps too. But you know, get your strings stretched out, and that'll take care of a lot of it, and, and lube up your bridge uh, and nut, and uh, that'll also help. So, hope this was helpful.